We'll shorten the name to El Good Morning Everybody and thanks for being invited. We'll shorten the name. I'm going to try and make this uh, short. LC is Late Capolithic, EB is obviously Early Bronze, and Elliot Braun. Uh, it's the transitional period between the end of settlements displaying what I would call normative late Calcolithic material culture and the beginning of the earliest traditionally recognized EB1 settlements, which are rather numerous and may be defined by ceramics and related artifacts. Conventional periods are primarily heuristic artificial constructs for sequential and relative chronologies, i.e. frameworks for understanding and discussing the archaeological record. Such periods are basic and relatively easily identifiable units based on material culture as understood from the exposed archaeological record. And they are independent of other aspects of the human experience, such as the level and or type of social organization, economic activity, regional patterns, etc. Since Epipaleolithic times, and this is something I take as a given, the Southern Levant has been continuously, continuously occupied with no hiatus. Early Bronze Age periodization offers a conventional framework for discussion, but its periods and sub-periods have never been precisely defined. When first defined EB1 and in you'll see it originally with a Roman one, but I think uh, I prefer this way of writing it, was considered a short period, but a greatly expanded archeological record in the last uh, 60, 70 years has made most of the old <coughs> terms, EB1A, EB1B, et cetera, obsolete. And I believe that they are insensitive to regional and chronological differentiations. The archaeological record indicates a serious break in the cultural burden between the latest Calcolithic and earliest traditionally acknowledged EB occupations, notably in vastly different sets of material culture, pottery, chipstone, groundstone, architecture, iconography, or lack, lack thereof, and continuity in occupations, etc. Just gives you an idea of some of the very typical late Calcolithic types of artifacts, which we use to define the uh, LC. EB1 is a period that roughly covers the second half of the fourth millennium. During that time, the Southern Levant underwent revolutionary changes in regard to social organization. It followed a period of massive upheaval in human society following the end or collapse and virtual disappearance of Calcolithic society and a period of transition that is very poorly represented in the archaeological record. It began afterward as a patchwork of villages and hamlets, later in somewhat chronologically advanced phases, complex, apparently hierarchical social organization arose at select sites. Some sites appear to have had urbanizing tendencies uh, associated with large agglomerations of populations. Others appear to be centers of activity, religious and or administrative perhaps, that involve satellite communities. Megiddo, the Great Temple is an example. Probably villages and hamlets were dependent upon such places for some services, possibly in exchange for foodstuffs. Accordingly, EB1 as a name for a period reflects neither social organization nor any radical changes in the, social, in the human social condition that may have occurred. Was there co cultural continuity from the late Calcolithic, and if so, to what degree? Mortuary behavior, architectural traditions change, artifacts, ceramic typology is different. You have the disappearance of some types new types appearing, ceramic methodology, continuity and technical aspects up to a certain point, ground stone types, the disappearance of some and new types appear, <coughs> flake stone, some continuity and greater reliance on new types, Canaanian blades, tabular scrapers, the disappearance of old types, single back sickle blades, and the dates for this transition period, I suggest based on radiocarbon dating at uh, specific sites is between 3700 and 3500 BC. The problem with radiocarbon uh, assays, is it a panacea or a problem? And I think it's both. Panacea is scientific uh, methodology and absolute values. If the science is good, the results are incontrovertible. 
the problems are limitations of absolute values, a plus minus factor, cross-checking between labs can remove some errors, validity, do samples actually represent specific and verifiable archaeological deposits? The validity of samples, the GIGO factor, garbage in, garbage out. In other words, if your data are not good to begin with, this is an old thing I learned many years ago from a, somebody by the name of Alfred Krumholtz, who was the, one of the first people to introduce me to, uh, um, to uh, computers. The validity of samples, materials, or the, is there physical uh, contamination, scientific validity of assays? It's a problem for physicists, not for us. Are the samples short-lived, long-lived, and is there a contamination? These are some of the sites which I suggest belong in this period between the end of the Calcolithic and the beginning of EB1. The Cave of the Warrior at Ketef Jericho. It has a radiocarbon date and a Canaanian blade that suggests uh, it's fairly early in the fourth millennium. Jebel Mutawak in Jordan, possible pottery and architecture. And I think that some of the pottery is much earlier than the EB1, the late EB1 date that the excavators suggest. Got Gouvrine, the pottery, Canaanian blades. Some of it might be late Calcolithic. Givata Oranim, occupation with radiocarbon dates, indented ledge handles, Canaanian blades. Ashkelon, Af Nadar area G, possible radiocarbon dates, but they're olive wood and it might have the old, uh, the old wood effect. Afridar area F, radiocarbon dates, but not associated with specific deposits. Shikmim, radiocarbon dates, but of dubious bona fides. Uh, the tells of Magas and Hujirat al Ruzlan in Aqaba, the sites that were mentioned where they were copper. The thing is that you, we can't really call them late Calcolithic. In date, they are more or less contemporary, probably, or very in this transition period, but the material culture is totally different. It's probably regional and uh, so, for the moment, very specific. And there must be a lot more in the archaeological record. This, again, more late Calcolithic artifacts, just to remind you the kind of architecture you have, late Calcolithic, and maybe the uh, rectangular architecture. This is uh, the beginning of some very late Calcolithic. Notice uh, here you have uh, the introduction of something which formerly was suspected to be an early Bronze I uh, innovation, and that's the indented ledge handle. You have here um, several examples, I think, uh, uh, Shai Bar for uh, this one from uh, Fatsael and uh, Yanir Milevsky for these from Mazor. Other sites that are probably more important are Modin, the occupations, radiocarbon dates in the pottery, and you'll hear more about that from uh, Valentin Roux. Yesodot uh, has uh, I believe belongs in the same period, pottery and Canaanian blades, Givat Oranim I mentioned before, with radiocarbon dates, indented ledge handles, Canaanian blades, and some, some of the aspects may be this period and some may be a bit earlier. Ben Shemin has pottery, which looks like it fits in here, that was excavated by Jean Perrault many years ago. Palmachim <coughs> Quarry, uh, I have material from unstratified surfaces, more or less below uh, bulldozer blades and some pottery, I believe, that might come from so-called Calcolithic caves and they can be compared and contrasted with uh, material that was excavated across the Wadi by Amir Grozalzani, which looks more like a bit earlier, uh, what we call normative uh, uh, Rasulian style uh, pot pottery in circular graves built above ground with uh, stone foundations. Ashkelon area G again, possibly and uh, Nitzanin, possibly the very earliest pottery there. And Shikmin, there were radiocarbon dates, but I wonder about that myself. This gives you an idea of what's missing, what becomes missing. The X's represent things that you don't find, the Palmachim Cemetery, Palmachim North, okay? And the kinds of graves. This these are things that I believe we can identify as the very latest Calcolithic or the LCEB1 uh, phase. 
the end of bifacial tools. We just don't find them in EB contexts. We don't find ashways of any type, <coughs> neither stone nor pottery nor any shape. Okay, certain kinds of uh, vessels, no cornets. I think cornets in any case died out uh, somewhat before the end of the Calcolithic. The kinds of uh, stone bowl decoration, and here you see pottery bowl decoration, fenestrated stone vessels, although you find some fenestrated vessels in EB1, and these um, burial uh, stele or whatever you want to call them. So these are things that just disappear. This gives you an idea. If you look at uh, Modin, we think that the uppermost are very early EB1 or this period that we talk about. Uh, Modin has given us the dates that uh, between Modin and uh, Fatsa'el, we ha that's when we get the idea of 37 or 3800 BC to uh, 3500. Uh, these are select parts from Modin. And you can begin to see also the Ben Shemin tomb, certain styles, the, the appearance uh, on large storage jars of indented ledge handles, uh, the kind of uh, this Modine Stratum III uh, pithos, which is not very dissimilar to some found at uh, Yiftachel Stratum II, and, uh, and also the site of Metzer in. Uh, the same, more or less the same period, and uh, it gives you an idea. Palmachim, we have these uh, unstratified pits, they were found below bulldozer uh, work, and unfortunately, we can't really say exactly when they belong to, but they appear to be of the same uh, era. This is just a very quick review of a lot of dates from that show you what happened at what sites <coughs> according to carbon 14. Okay, we have Modin, Chorvat, Nevalat, and it shows you the, the problem is that some of these dates are not very uh, precise. That's what there is, and we have to deal with them. Uh, interesting, uh, from Hujerat al-Huzlan, very interesting dates. They go down to much later than Alex suggested, but uh, again, there are phases, and we don't know enough about it to uh, say exactly when the site began and when it ended. The pottery is something so non-normative. It's very similar, from what I understand, the pottery from Tel Magas, but it doesn't look like anything we have in the north. So it's a totally different uh, material culture, including the architecture also. Here are some more. These are just a review very quickly. This gives you an idea of what I think are these very late Calcolithic bowls, some of them from Palmachim, from caves excavated, excavated by uh, Professor Ram Gofna many years ago. And you can see uh, also from uh, Ben Shemin, these uh, two, bo uh, two large vessels, and one from a pit in Palmachim Quarry. Okay, and here, these are possible, some types from uh, Nitzanin, Stratum 5, and here, Ashkelon, Area G. I'm not quite sure that all of these, but the, uh, Valentin will talk about uh, a lot about the, the way these, no? Sorry, okay. But anyway, if you read her article in, in Palais Orient with Edwin and uh, with Sariel Shalev, and you'll know all about the, the, the way, these type of bowls. Here's something else, and I have to thank the late Jean Perrault for giving me uh, a copy of an unpublished, not really a manuscript, but basically illustrations from Zeta or Gat Gouvrin. I think Hamoudi Khaleli also calls it some other, the same site, but by some other name, which I don't recall. And uh, gives you an idea of some of the things, the ones with the red stars are probably, they appear to belong to this period the late Calcolithic to EB transition. There are Canaanian blades. I'm, all, I'm almost finished. Okay, give out the name. That's it. <laughs>